We're live. We are here. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. You know, it, it's time to get our game faces on for a big game day. It, somehow or other, I don't think that's a game face. It's gamey. It, it, I don't think so. No? Oh, yeah. well. Okay. Uh, this, this is Mr. Billy Midler. And this is Mr. Pete O'Hare. And we are. Two, two guys, guys who don't know anything. And we're so glad that you're here joining us today for a uh, for our family message. And uh, you know, and it's uh, it, it is it is game day. It is uh, you know, and, and uh, time to get ready for yes, uh, yeah, for, for 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 the big game. Uh, you, you you have a favorite in that, or or, or, um, or no, not really. I do. I, I actually do. Uh, I I think the pizza rolls. Yes. Yeah, that's that's my favorite during Super Bowl pizza bowl, pizza, a pizza bowl, um, a whole bowl of pizza rolls. I can yeah. go with that. You know, uh, we had a, a, a former deacon here, uh, missed you, Tim, uh, Mr. Tim Briggs. Um, we missed the we missed the Briggs here. Uh, they moved to another area, but Tim used to call it the stupid. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the only reason that he would come to the church for our party is because we had really good hamburgers and hot dogs. So I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, but, uh, you know, yeah, I guess I do. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm on the underdog side, so kind of rooting for Tampa Bay a little bit today. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. I'd like to see. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to see because uh, the thing is, you know, Brady's getting you know, to, to to be up there, and you know, he's he's not going to last forever. So, so I'm I'm kind of with you on that. But uh, but uh, but to be honest with you, I'm just looking for um, a good game. Well, I just really, I, I, I don't want to see a, you know, a, a, a fifty to seven, you know, a final score. No. Where, 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 where the, where the end result is pretty much uh, in the bag by halftime. Exactly. And, and so, so I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for that because uh, uh, one of the things that that, that the NFL uh, does uh, show a lot is uh, the idea that even at, you know, even when you're competing so hard against each other, uh, at the end of the game, uh, these folks are all friends. These, all, oh, these yeah. folks are all, you know, good buddies. They, 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 uh, they, they don't want to see each other hurt, even when, even when they're, you know, colliding like, you know, so forth. Uh, and there's still, uh, you know, there, there are bonds of friendship between, oh, uh, between, the, between even, even the, the, the bitterest of rivals. And it's really cool after the game, many times you'll see groups of them huddled together, kneeling on the field and praying together. And, uh, and that's really cool to watch that. And, uh, and you, watch them, you watch them kneeling and praying over injured players. They do, absolutely. Um, you know, you'll see them, you know, you'll, uh, and, you'll, uh, and, and you'll see them, you know, just come up to each other, even, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and hug one another, and, yep. you know, good game. And, and it, it's a spirit of friendship and camaraderie oh, yeah. uh, that, uh, that, that kind of uh, dovetails into the uh, topic that we have today. And you know, before you go there, you know, I wanted to say how important the Super Bowl is to us. We do have a youth meeting tonight at 5.30. Hmm. And uh, to give you an idea of how important that game is to us, uh, we're going to be watching uh, a movie, Do You Believe?, so uh, if you have a <laughs> if you have a teenager or if you adults would like to come and watch the movie with us, please an come on up. An alternative it's a, to the game. Absolutely, it's it's gonna be really good. You can watch the end of the game at, at home later uh, because the game will be going until nine o'clock. So sure, you know sure. we're gonna watch a really good movie. There's a lot of good messages to it, and we just really feel strongly that it's the teenagers than the football game to get some spiritual truth. And an opportunity to kind of look at yourself and ask yourself the question: Do you believe? It's a and it's something that uh, every Christian has to answer for themselves at some point or oh, another. Oh yes, you know, do you believe? Uh, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, coming back to the idea of of the uh, of the friendship uh, between the players, I, I'd, I'd like you to go ahead and, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, introduce us to one of your old friends right here. This is one of my old friends, uh, and it's a very old friend, and you can see the electrical tape that's on it that is uh, coming off a little bit, but I got this Bible in 1977. I was 10 years old, and I said the books of the Bible in front, what is it? I was four. Yeah, he was four. I was yeah. four. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, well. Anyway, uh, this, this, this had color. This, this had color. Exactly. We didn't have gray up here. And I had hair up here. But 
I got this for saying the books of the Bible in front of the church. It was 1977. Uh, this is an old friend, and it's got verses that I still refer to. Uh, I've underlined a lot of things in it. It seems to find where I need to be more. And I can't really explain that, but it's just an old friend. And uh, then in the back, I've got a very old prayer list that's got some names that still with us today. This was from a different church, and some of the names on here are, are at this church today. And uh, just some really great things to refer back to from my childhood and on up. This Bible went with me into the army, and um, it's seen a lot, and it's seen me through a lot. Yeah. God's Word has been a great friend to me. And, you know, the, uh, the condition of that Bible, I, I can, I can, you can take a look at it real quick, mm -hmm. uh, folks. Uh, it, it's, it's a little worn, a little rough around the edges, uh, and not unlike us all. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but what it looks like to me, it, it's not just been a friend to you, it's been a best friend. It and, has. And, and, and again, that dovetails back into you know, our topic for today. Mm -hmm. And the title of today's lesson is called, uh, Isn't That What a Best Friend Does? You know, uh, and I, I know this is kind of, you know, a, a little bit of a stretch, uh, you know, kind, kind of shifting away from, from what we've been talking about for a second or two, but, uh, but anyone who knows me, knows what a big movie buff I am. You know, and uh, one of my favorite movie franchises of all time is the Toy Story franchises. Or the, 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 I'm sorry, the Toy Story franchise, I should say. All four movies have this wonderful, overarching message about the value of friendship. Mm -hmm. Each is unique, each has its own good points and bad points and so forth. But the idea of the uh, of all four of these movies is the idea that friendship is important. Um, and, uh, what it, and, and it also gives the idea about what a tremendous gift it is to have a best friend. Now, it, in the movies, you know, I'll tell you, I can't think of a closer friendship uh, than the one between you know, uh, Woody and Buzz. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, but, you know, and Kind of coming back a, a little bit to what our discussion is going to be about is that as Christians, we often call Jesus our Lord, or our King, or our Savior, mm -hmm. or or something you know, uh, in, or something that, that that gives like a a, a stature and 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 you know an above you type thing. And although and, and it's and, true, and, 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 and but it's true. These are all true. Uh, he is Lord. He yes. is King. He is Savior. He's all of these things, and it's good to think of Jesus in that in that manner. But did you also know that He also wants to be your friend? That's right. Not just a friend, but your best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, closer than Woody and Buzz ever were. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, you see, uh, there's a saying that I once heard uh, about. Christianity. Uh, and, and I found it to be absolutely true. Uh, Christianity is not really a religion, it's a relationship. A friendship, if you will. A deep friendship. The, the best friendship that you can have. Now, Jesus has all the qualities in a best friend. And today we're just we're going to uh, learn a, a few of them. Um, the first thing that uh, that makes Jesus not just a friend but a best friend is that Jesus listens to you. Uh, take a look, if you would, at Psalms uh, 5, 3. If you would, please read it. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. See, when you pray, you're talking to Jesus. You're actually speaking to him and he listens. Mm -hmm. And that's the important part. Um, because um, a, a lot of folks uh, put these uh, human ideas onto God. I want to make clear to everyone who's watching, God is never 
too busy to listen to you. Sorry. He is never too busy, even when, uh, you know, and, and a lot of kids, kind of, you know, kids, I, I want you to understand this too. Even when Mr. Billy and I are praying about the same, about, about um, different things mm -hmm. at the same time, guess what? No matter, no matter how many right. people, it could be, um, it could be you, your dad, your mom, my mom, uh, you know, my wife, my kids, Everybody. all praying about different things mm -hmm. all at the same time, and yet God sets aside everything else right. and listens to each one of us, even if it's at the same time. You know, how does this happen? Well, you know, that's just one uh, of the mysteries. He, he's God. <laughs> yes, he is. How does he do this? He's God. He can. Two big words, omnipotence and, and omnipresence. There's two big, two big <laughs> words, we'll, 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 and that might be a, a, something to go That's for another day. <laughs> um, um, but the thing is, he listens to you because he can. You, he does. Yeah. yeah it, it doesn't matter if uh, you're praying about you know, a little thing, like maybe a, a, a lost toy, or you're just thanking him for your breakfast or whatever. Right. Um, yeah, or whether it's about big stuff, like uh, divorce or war. Mm -hmm. You know, which, you know, which kids, you know? Uh, uh, which concern, more. Cons yeah. Which does concern kids? Uh, you know, and, and, and if that's one of your concerns, uh, kids out there, understand this. God will listen to you when you pray to him. He wants to listen. And he'll always be there with an open ear. Isn't that what a best friend does? Yes. Another thing about uh, that that makes Jesus a best friend is that Jesus is honest. If you wouldn't mind, please read uh, Titus 1-2. In the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. You know, this verse makes it clear that God doesn't lie. Right. He can't. It's not in him to tell you a lie. Sure. He, it, it is, it, it's, it's something called, you know, it, there, there's a phrase called not in his nature. Right. It's, it, it's and what that means is um, it is just something that he is not going to do. It's, um, it is, a lot of people say, a lot of people try and, you know, give us, you know, can God lie? He can, but he doesn't. He doesn't because he, because he is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. He, he, uh, he doesn't because to do so would be against everything that he is. Right, his very nature. Yeah. Um, and he never makes promises that he doesn't keep. Right. Uh, he is always truthful. In everything that he says, and in everything that he does, there is there is nothing false about him. None. He is always truthful. He is always honest. And isn't that what a best friend does? Absolutely. Another quality. Now, Jesus will always be up by your side. Now, Jesus, who by the hundred percent God, hundred percent man, hundred percent God. How that happens, but <laughs> but we'll. You know, I can't explain it. We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll take it by faith. We'll, we'll take it by faith. Um, but he makes this promise. Man, he makes the promise to always be by your side, uh, many many times in the Bible. Yes. But uh, you know, for example, in Deuteronomy thirty one six, it it, uh, it says this: Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He kind of repeats this and it refers back to here also in Hebrews 13.5. It says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So what this says is that you can count on Jesus to be by your side and guide you no matter what. No matter what. He's always going to be there for you. Right. He's always going to be because he never is going to leave you, never is going to forsake you. He is always going to be by your side. 
You know, good times, bad times, he's going to encourage you. He's going to lift you up, comfort you, defend you, and never leave you feeling lonely. Isn't that what a best friend does? Yes. Another quality that Jesus has is that Jesus loves you no matter what you've done. Now, he will always be there to give you the love that you deserve and the love that you don't deserve. My personal favorite Bible story is this one. Uh, it's in John 8, 2 through 11. And I'd like you to read that for me, please, Mr. Belly. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses uh, has commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using the question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger all the sins that they had committed. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground the rest of their sins. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Uh, that's, um, that's a story that always hits me. Yeah, But you know... Pete, in that story, and I love the story myself, he was being a friend to a lot of people in that story. And, and some of them didn't get it. Because he was trying to help the Pharisees to understand that you don't understand the law, but who you need is me. Mm -hmm. And then he flat out told this woman, I, I'm not judging you uh, based on, on your deeds. I'm judging you on your heart. And what do you believe in? What have you placed your faith in? And he was telling her, you need me. So he was being a friend even to the Pharisees, yes. telling them, I want to love you, but I need you to place your faith in me. So it's a wonderful story about friendship. And a lot of people don't see the friendship that Jesus was showing to the Pharisees. You know, um, or that the, 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 uh, the woman had done something. Uh, had, bad. Had done something bad. <laughs> bad. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're, we're just going to say, we're just going to leave it there. Um, but Jesus loved her anyway. Absolutely. You see, Jesus loves you no matter what you've done. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and if you've ever done something that you're not proud of, guess what? You're not alone. No. No. It, <laughs> because, it, you know, I mean, have you done ever done something that you're not proud of? It's okay. We all have. We've all been there. But Jesus loves you yes. and me anyway. In spite of ourselves. Uh, he loves you when you need his love the most. Ooh. He loves you when you need his love the most. And isn't that what a best friend does? You know, Pete, that's a great lesson. And i got to give credit to credit where it's due. This was from Gideon Little. And one of our Sunday school teachers, uh, he's a wonderful man of God. And he said, grace, God's unmerited favor, grace meets you at the intersection of your greatest need. Mm. His love meets us when we're unlovable, mm -hmm. when we're at our worst, mm -hmm. when we need him the most, his he love. Love us. He loves us the most. That's when, exactly. It's right there. Wonderful, wonderful lesson in that. Um. One other thing that Jesus, uh, one other quality about Jesus is that um, he doesn't care about appearances. No, he does, he does not. not care about appearances. Thank you, Lord. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I art ugly and fat. 
<laughs> but Jesus <laughs> loves me anyway. I am a, I am homely and have no sense of style. <laughs> but, Jesus but Jesus loves, loves me anyway. anyway. Yeah. There needs to be that song. We gotta get that written. <laughs> I know. At, at some at, you know, at some point, absolutely. Yes. Um, but uh, I, I'm sure you've heard, as you know, as as many of us have, uh, an old saying. Uh, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's not what's outside, but what's inside that counts. Um, and First uh, Samuel sixteen seven says something a lot like these, uh, like like these old uh, sayings. But the Lord said to Samuel, "Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at." Mm. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You know, getting into the weeds a little bit, um, Samuel in that verse was trying to choose Israel's next king. Um, And a lot of folks were uh, brought before Samuel from from, from a particular uh, family. We're we're getting into the weeds a little bit. And uh, a lot of handsome, strong Tall, um, you know, really, uh, you know, good-looking folks were, were were brought before Samuel, and at each time that uh, that one of these folks was brought before Samuel, Samuel looked at him and said, "Nope, nope." We're, we're trying. We're, you know, they, were, they were trying to choose a king, and they said, "No, no, 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 no." All these really great-looking guys. Folks that you'd follow into battle. The last person that was brought before Samuel was this scrawny, skinny little kid. And Samuel looked at him and said, that's the one. Why? Because that person, David, was a boy at that point after God's own heart. Yes. Jesus sees you as someone that he wants to be a best friend to. Jesus sees you as someone he wants as a best friend. Absolutely. You know, whether you wear clothes from Forever 21 or a thrift store, whether you play D&D or football, short or tall, man or woman, two or 102, Black, white, red, yellow, rich, poor, street sweeper or king, he accepts you. Yes. For you. For who you are. And isn't that what best friend does? Thank God. Mm. Another thing about Jesus is is that Jesus wants what's best for you. We're going to read a very, very familiar verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. But I want, Mr. Billy, if you wouldn't mind, please, I want you to read it a different way. When you read this verse, I would like you to really emphasize the word you. Each time you come to it, each time you come to it, put an emphasis on the word you. If you would please read it. Absolutely. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to to give you hope and a future. Have you ever had a friend who was in that friendship all for themselves? Um, Maybe because you you always had the better soda in the fridge or the better video games or a bigger backyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then when you got grounded from those video games, that friend was nowhere to be found, gone, poof, Jesus isn't like that. He can't be like that. You see, he already owns it all, so, you know, he's not in it. He's not in the friendship for the better soda, video games, or backyard. No, he's in it for you. He's in it for you to prosper you. He's in this friendship to prosper you. He's in this friendship because he wants you as his best friend. He is he is in the friendship for you. <laughs> yes. And isn't that what a best friend 
does. Puts you first. Mm. One final thing that Jesus, one final quality that Jesus has, and one final thing is he, that he was willing and did uh, give his life for you. Yes. You know, at the Last Supper, uh, Jesus says this in John uh, 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Mm. Um, but Jesus didn't just say empty words like this. No. He meant every word. Greater love has... Uh, there is no greater love than the willingness to give your life for one's friends. He is your best friend. He gave his life for you. Absolutely. His best friend. Friend. These aren't just empty words. He put these words into action. And he gave himself up on the cross. And why? Because his best friend, you, needed a path to heaven. He took the punishment for what? He took the punishment for your benefit. Yeah. He took the punishment for you, his best friend. He gave his life for you because he is your best friend. Gave his life. And if I can't Isn't be, that what a best friend does? It is. And if I can, there's one other verse there that needs to be read. And it's right there after that verse in, chapter, in verse 13. He says, and Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And in verse 14 he says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. If you follow my commandments, you're my friend. He calls you friend right there in the Bible. Yep. Uh, there is uh, there is one last thing uh, that a best friend does. Um, and he introduces that best friend to his other friends. Now, Matthew 18 puts it this way. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. See, uh, you are already Jesus' best friend. And um, if Jesus isn't right now already your best friend, he can be. But yes, he can. He can be. Um, and if you want Jesus to be your best friend, pray this prayer with me uh, from your heart. That means you really have to mean it. Father God, I admit to you that I am a sinner. I have broken your laws, and I have not done what I am supposed to do. I believe that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to pay for that sin. I confess him now as my Lord my Savior, and my best friend. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, or even the hundredth, yep. uh, you know, Mr. Billy and I would love to celebrate with you. And I would like you to listen carefully after our dismissal prayer in a minute or two um, to, for information on uh, how you can get in contact with us with you. Jesus is already your best friend. It's our job now to share him with others. It's our job to do what it says in Matthew 28, 19. Mm -hmm. It's our job to introduce our best friend to all other friends. After all, 
Isn't that what a best friend does? Truly does. And Pete, I want to add something to this, and this is not expected, and we haven't discussed this, but God put this on my heart as you were present. And I'm just going to read the verses here of this old hymn. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him, I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings, and he gives them o'er and o'er. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvests, golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, and true to him I'll be. Oh, how could I this friend deny when he's so true to me? Following him, I know I'm right. He watches o'er me both day and night. Following him by day and night, he's my friend. And the last verse, I, I have to do it this way. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now, I'll trust him when life's fleeting days shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend, beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy, he's my friend. What Jesus friend. has been my friend since I was 16 years old. Thought I knew him before that. It took that long for him really to be real to me. Today you can make him your friend. Doesn't matter how old you are. If you understand that Jesus Christ gave his life for you, came to this earth to live a perfect life as an example for us, he did die, he was buried, he did raise from the dead, victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and gave us that victory. Mm. If you believe that in your heart, place your faith in that, he is your friend. He is your Savior right now. And what a friend we have in what Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are not just my Lord, not just my Savior, not just my King, but my friend as well. Ah, uh, I can't ask for a better friend. You are my best friend. Thank you. Thank you so much for being by me when I need you. Thank you so much for meeting me where I am. Thank you so much for loving me when I am not lovable. Thank you so much for being the best friend that I could possibly have. I pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen. All right, folks, and uh, uh, last things last before we go, uh, like I said, I wanted you to, uh, if uh, you have prayed the prayer of, uh, of confession and the, the sinner's prayer that we did just, early, just a few minutes earlier, again, we'd love to celebrate with you. Uh, this is how you can get in contact with us. Either uh, call us up. Uh, at 281-859-9060. You can get in contact with, uh, uh, with Mr. Robert, our church secretary. He'll pass the message on to us, and we'll be able to celebrate with you. You can leave a comment in uh, one of the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, section here uh, on, our, on our Facebook page. Uh, I would ask that you like, uh, share, subscribe on our, on our YouTube channel. Do all these things because this message of friendship needs to get out there. Uh, it, it, we've got a lot of hurt, hurting people out there, hurting people who need a friend. And the best friend that they, you can uh, that, that that can possibly give them is Jesus. And uh, uh, last things last, uh, I just want to thank you so much for your time, for your attention. Uh, oh, I, uh, the the uh, you can also get in contact with us via email info at autumncreekfamily.org. Thanks again so much for your time and your attention. Good night. And God bless.